Hi, and welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at coastal processes. Let's start with the basic, what is the coast? The coast is simply where the land meets the sea. This area we call the coast. The main driving force for the coast in terms of what causes the erosion, what causes the transportation and the deposition is waves. So first we have to look at the characteristics and features that make waves. Now a wave size and shape is measured by frequency and this has each of its own features. We're starting with a high frequency wave. In this we can see that it has a very short wavelength. It's got a high energy which means it will have a high wave height. Go to the medium frequency and we can see that the medium wavelength is now, so it went from short to medium and the height of the wave went medium as well, so this is medium energy in the water. Even further, once you reach the low frequency wave, we'll find again the low wavelength and there's low energy in the water, so it's a low wave height. The main driving force behind these waves is wind, so wind blows over the surface of the sea and this is what causes the waves. The power of waves is one of the most significant forces of coastal change. The size and energy of a wave is influenced by the wind's strength, how long it's been blowing, and the fetch, which is how far the wave has traveled. When measuring the strength of wind, we measure it in kilometers per hour by a wind speed meter. In the description, I'm going to be leaving a clip where you can see how these variations look like. So you get to see what exactly does 5 miles per hour look like, what does 30 miles per hour look like. And it's actually a great video, I recommend it, so the link will be in the description. Let's start off with some key terminology. When we say the word sediment, sediment is the matter that settles at the bottom of a liquid. So if you get a glass and you go to the beach and you collect some seawater, eventually all those sand and rocks and tiny shells are going to collect at the bottom. That is sediment. Now swash is a huge part of this. So swash is when a wave breaks and water washes up on the beach. So essentially as you see the wave coming, it will break and it will wash up on the beach. If you ever go to the beach, this is you standing there and you see the shore come up to your feet. That is the swash. So the swash is what comes in. The backwash is when it goes back. So when the water runs back, we call that the backwash. Now, depending on which one is stronger, you get a different feature. So with swash, it's going in, with backwash, it's going back. If the swash is stronger than the backwash, you get what's called a constructive wave. Imagine the swash coming in and it brings, we'll say, one pound of sand onto the shore. But the backwash being weaker only takes back half a pound. Here we can see the swash going in and gently the backwash coming back, but then the swash comes back forward again. So this is the swash and backwash. This being a constructive wave because the swash is stronger. Now constructive waves are less powerful waves and they're made by gentle winds. So these are not the high energy waves, they do not have a high wave length or a high a wave height. So these are your less powerful waves and they're constructive, so they'll bring a lot in and take a little less. They are known for having a long wavelength, small wave height, a gradual slope, and sand. This kind of wave wouldn't have a lot of energy in the water, we would call this a low energy. Now constructive waves build beaches and are known for flat shores and sand. So the constructive wave, they dump the sediment and that builds up the beaches. So every time a wave comes in, it will bring that sediment and the backwash only takes a little bit back. So you can see how that continued added effect will create a beach. Uh, a nice analogy would be simply weight gain. If you eat a lot of food and do a little bit of exercise, you'll gain weight. So that would be your constructing, your constructing sort of body mass. Now constructive waves also create deposition. Now remember from the previous video, we saw how there are three processes, erosion, transportation, deposition. Deposition is where the sediment is laid down. 
Coastal deposition is when the sea drops or deposits material. This can include things like sand, sediment and shingles. Now, when the backwash is stronger than the swash, you get what's called a destructive wave. Now, this one, opposite to the constructive wave, has a much stronger backwash. So if the sediment brings in one pound, the backwash will take away two pounds. So it destructs the beach. It doesn't build it up, it takes sediment away. Now, they are caused by more powerful waves made by strong winds. So here we should see that it's not going to have the constructive wave features. It's not going to be a low wave height, low wave length. It's going to be high. It's going to have a high wave height, high wave length. And that's what we'll see. We have short wave length here, a high wave height, typically a steep slope. And since destructive waves remove material from the coast, causing erosion, they're also known for pebbles and rocks. So if a constructive wave adds a lot of sediment, the rocks on the shore will be piled on by sand. Now, if you were to have a destructive wave that keeps taking that sediment away, it's strong enough to take the sediment, not strong enough to take all the pebbles and rocks. So what you get is all the sediment's removed and you ended up with a rocky, pebbly beach. Here we can see a weak swash and a much stronger backwash and not much sediment there. It's largely pebbles and rocks, maybe some shells as well. So this is a destructive wave. Here's another example where you can see a destructive wave. Notice how the backwash is much stronger. The force of waves crashing on the shore damages it but destructive waves can erode the coastline in other ways. So now we're going to be looking at the different ways that destructive waves can erode a beach. Now, the ways that destructive waves can erode coastlines is through hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition, and solution. Let's go through each of these, starting with hydraulic action. First question, what does hydraulic mean? So hydraulic is denoting or relating to a liquid moving in a confined space under pressure. Think of a syringe. That liquid is in a confined space. As you add that pressure, it would be called hydraulic. So hydraulic action is when waves force air into cracks and weaken cliffs. So what would this look like is as the waves crash in, they pocket air and they force them into existing cracks, which causes them to wedge. Every time it wedges, it opens a bit and a bit more. So this would be an example of hydraulic action. In this example, we can see how as the wave crashes into this wall, it collects and pockets air, and then it forces them through existing cracks, which causes them to wedge, meaning they cause erosion in that sense. It's breaking into smaller and smaller pieces. And this is hydraulic action. The next one is abrasion. Now, abrasion is scraping or wearing something away. Think of you falling, you burn a skateboard, and then you fall and you abrase your knee. Now, sandpaper, and rightly so, is the most common example used to describe abrasion, because if you were to take a sanding block and use a back and forward motion by hand along a surface, you would wear away that surface. If it was a wave carrying the sand and stones, because sandpaper obviously has sand in it, it's the same feature. It will also abrade and wear away that surface. So abrasion is when waves bring bits of rock and sand with them and grind the bits down like sandpaper. So there's a lot of sand in beaches. Well, duh. And as the wave comes in through the swash, it will bring it and drag along the surface. This creates abrasion, just like sandpaper. Next, we're going to be looking at attrition. Attrition is reducing of something's strength or effectiveness through sustained attack or pressure. So destructive waves have an interesting feature in that they can take one big rock and, through attrition, create two smaller rocks. And the way they do this is by destructive waves causing the rocks and pebbles on the shore to smash together, getting smaller and smoother. As you see here, we can notice that as they start to hit each other, they'll get smaller and smoother. Rock polishing kits are essentially this in a controlled setting. What will take months and months to do, they can do in a matter of days. And this is the result of attrition. 
will notice that these rocks are surprisingly smooth. Why? Because the destructive waves would rub them against each other and then they would start to become smoother and smoother. And that is attrition. Next, let's look at solution, or to break down something. So solution is when acids contained in seawater slowly dissolve rocks. Now the devil here is salt water. Salt water is very strong, and it's strong enough to even eat metal. Here we can see an example from the city of Edmonton. They had a lot of snow, so they said let's put salty brine on the roads. And that salt caused tremendous rust damage to cars. And this is an example, so it can eat metal. and strong enough to dissolve rock. Here we can see an example of how solution has gone through and dissolved the base of this rock, creating this landfall. Here is another extreme example. And seen here. And that is coastal erosion. So do you feel confident in these forms of coastal erosion? Do you think you can explain, define, and illustrate hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition, and solution? If so, you've absorbed the lesson. Next lesson we're going to be seeing how these processes form distinct landforms. And we're going to be focusing on areas in Kent because I went there and I have pictures. Face reveal at 1K. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please support the channel by clicking subscribe.